It takes a lot to amaze God, don't you think? Now that verb amaze occurs 30 plus times in the New Testament and all the all the occurrences except for two describe how people are amazed at what Jesus said or did. But there's two places where Jesus is amazed. Once negatively when he was rejected by the people of his boyhood hometown, but here positively when he was struck by the simple faith of a Gentile. And we can easily gloss over Jesus' response, but it is truly amazing and astonishing. Verse 9, when Jesus heard this, he was amazed at him, and turning to the crowd that followed him, he said, I tell you, not even in Israel have I found such faith. Jesus never said this about someone from God's hand-picked Old Testament people, the Israelites. The greatest example of faith Jesus points to is a Gentile, a man who never had the advantages of the Hebrew Scriptures or the God-ordained ceremonies of the Old Testament, all of which pointed to the saving work of Christ. This rich Roman soldier knew his unworthiness but he also knew that Jesus could heal his servant by the power of a word. And that's exactly what Jesus did. Look at verse 10. When those who had been sent returned to the house, they found the slave in good health. Here was a person who was at the point of death, and now by the word of Jesus, he's in good health. So some application this morning. As summer vacations soon start, it's appropriate for us to remember that we dare not ever take a vacation from the Word of God. The Word of God is the way that God comes to us. When we keep ourselves away from God's house and from God's Word, we're keeping ourselves from the way that God comes to us, the way that God communicates with us. But when we come to God's house and open God's Word, then despite our unworthiness, God comes to us with the power of a forgiving word of grace and mercy. That's how God comes to us, in God's powerful and gracious word. God's word turned your baptism from a mere church ceremony into a faith-creating adoption into God's family. Martin Luther asked in the small catechism, how, how can water do such great things? And he says it's not the water, but it's God's word with the water that gives us forgiveness, new life, and salvation. God's Word takes the elements of bread and wine and presents you with the very body and blood of Christ that accomplished your redemption on the cross and comes to you with forgiveness today. God's Word in the mouth of His servants presents you with the promise and assurance of pardon and forgiveness and absolution from Christ Himself. God's Word preached every weekend proclaims the heavenly good news that Jesus' blood has cleansed us from sin and that Jesus' resurrection has provided for us resurrection on the day of His return. God's Word that has been taught all year long in Sunday school and in our Ascension Lutheran school has fed many lambs with spiritual food that keeps their faith alive and growing. And God's word shared among all of you as Christian friends comforts us with the knowledge that Jesus has come to be our Savior. Despite our unworthiness, Jesus comes to us today by the power of his life-giving and his sin-forgiving word. Today this rich Roman soldier becomes kind of a, like a model of faith for us. Yes, his own confessed unworthiness, but also his faith and his trust in Jesus, he calls him Lord. Also his loving care for those people in need, his generosity to the faith community, his humility in simply believing in the power of the Word of God. May Jesus continue to be amazed today by people of faith. But remember, like in today's story, it may come in surprising ways from unexpected people. David Loos from Luther Seminary in his writing this past week asks us 
some questions, and I'll close the sermon with these questions for us to think about as we pray. And these are, his questions are about prayer. He says, could we pray that we might be less surprised that God uses people we have decided are unexpected or unlikely to do such wonderful things? Could we pray that God would open our hearts and, and eyes to see that God's love, God's will, God's work extends far beyond the confines that we might want to put around them? That the God who showed up in the man crucified on a cross regularly shows up where we don't expect God to be and never, ever stops delighting and surprising us? Could we pray that prayer as well? Amen. Our worship continues with a time of silence as we all reflect upon the Word of God this morning and then with uh, the singing of our next hymn.